dramatic entrance. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy that you wanted to join me today. Today's video is going to be completely different and it is brought to you by the advice of Sustainably Vegan's Emu. I met her whilst I was in London and we talked about all kinds of things and I ended up telling her that I am synesthetic. Um, and I don't tell that many people because it's not really relevant to their lives or whatnot. It's just something weird that my body does that can be fun, um, but also it's a bit weird. But I told her and she was like, oh, you have to make a video about that. You need to talk about that. So here we go. I don't know that many technical details about synesthesia. What I do know is that it makes senses uh, in your brain wash together and that can have a lot of different manifestations. Some people, for instance, s taste music or see sound. Um, for my specific instance, I see numbers in colors. Not all numbers, some numbers are more, you know, ordinary, but for instance, I see fives completely red all the time. Um, some people think that when I say I see numbers in color is that I see the color inside my head when I think, see or hear the number five. But the number five is always red whenever I see it. And the number seven is navy blue, nine is more, you know, bright blue. And fours and threes are also just a wee bit red. Some numbers like one are a bit purpley. Um, but some numbers, like for instance 8, does not really have a colour. It's very difficult to explain. Um, but what happened, uh, not happened, I do reckon it has always been like that inside of my head. But if, if you go your whole life and think that the sky is green and no one ever says anything about it, you will start to believe that that's just the way the world works and it was like that for me with the number thing because I never questioned it, I think it was always like that um, so I never really said anything, it was when I, um, I don't even know when I, <laughs> it's really embarrassing because I was quite old, when I started high school, it's the Danish gym, uh, gymnasium, um, you're around 15 I reckon that I started to think a lot about it, maybe I was a bit younger actually, but when I started to do more compli uh, complex, complicated mathematics, I'm really bad at math by the way, I am also just FYI, uh, I have dyscalculia so I can't really see the logic in numbers, um, that's difficult as well, um, but I do see the logic in my colour systems which is great, but I never thought that it was something that bothered me that much was fine and I realized super super late that it was something that was unique and unique to some people, other people have it but all manifestations are different and so I never really questioned it and just oh what well, well, yeah oh great is that how it works for everyone cool um you know um oh but yeah but I realized this is going to be a super unorganized video because I don't usually talk about this and I only talk out of my own perspective and I can't really tell how other people feel about it or experience it. So, but I learned super super late that I actually had synesthesia um, because I never really thought that much about it. Just fives are red, it's fine, it's great. Um, but yeah, fives are always red and blues are always red. Blues. <laughs> Seven's all of it, always blue, nine's are blue, and it's fine, yeah. Um, but then, super dramatic. This is not that dramatic. Last year, I uh, participated in this PhD project um, about synesthesia, and they wanted people with synesthesia to uh, do some tests and just, you know, so they could pinpoint what sort of manifestation the synesthesia had. So, yeah. Um, and half of these tests were related to faces and facial recognition. Now comes the important part of the video, which is important. But um, was about facials, uh, facial expressions, facial recognition. And I completed the tests, and I asked the test holders, the uh, scientist guys, types, um, why in the world 
I was doing tests on facial recognition and facial expressions because, as I reckoned, uh, synesthesia and my synesthesia had a, a manifestation in colour and number, and that was my thing. <laughs> but they told me that people with synesthetic uh, abilities often had a very, very hard time with faces and facial expressions and facial recognition, and, and they often lacked some sort of really, really simple ability to recognise faces and facial recognition. What? Um, I never thought about that in a million years because everything's just made so much sense all of a sudden. I have always been so bad with faces and people are often quite rude to me or pissed because I seem like I don't know them and it's just that I don't really recognise faces at all. My most difficult thing is that I don't read faces at all. Um, I can't tell if people are angry or sad. Those two are just completely bundled up um, together and it's so difficult for me to tell if people are bored when I talk to them, which is quite nice because I'm a lecturer and it gives workshops and whatnot, so it's nice to know that people... I have no idea of telling if they're bored. I'll just continue to talk forever. I talk to my mum about it because she, she didn't know either, and none of us know them very much about synesthesia. And it's just in the recent years that I started actually to talk to doctors or you know scientists and people about it. Because, but my mom told me when I was younger, I would stare into mirrors all the time, and she thought that it was just a fun gimmick or something that I did that, that was cute and whatnot as a baby and as a toddler. Um, but then she asked me, is it possible that you didn't even recognise your own face when you were small? Shit! <laughs> and I just had this epiphany because I, I, I did it while I was a baby and I think it's very, very normal for babies. I've heard different studies saying that babies usually do that and toddlers usually do that. But I've always done it, like up until I was 10, I could stare into mirrors whilst people were having conversations with me and I sometimes do it still, it's just habit now. Um, but whenever we were at the table, um, they had to place me so I couldn't stare into my own reflection. Like I was, and I was quite old as a child when this happened, still. Um, and my mom, she just started to speculate whether or not it was because I couldn't even recognize my own face and it makes so much sense because if I, if I also just family, um, I know the feeling I get when I think of someone in my family but I have a really really hard time actually just picturing what they look like. I know what my mom and my, my dad and my father looks like but uh, other than that I can have a really hard time just picturing it because if I want to picture it I start picturing a certain picture that I know. Like I have this picture of me and my grandmother and whenever I think of, her, think of this picture I can't just isolate that image of her head. Um, so everything just made so much sense. So this could also be some sort of disclaimer if you run into me on the street and I seem like I don't know you, it's because I can't recognise your face. Um, and I never really thought that it was that much of a problem and never really thought it was that much of a bother because it's fine. And if people really want to talk to me on the street they usually just I say, oh, Gita, come over here, and she's, oh, yeah, oh, hi, we talked yesterday and stuff, so it's just fine, but I have if I'm just sitting by myself and people walk by, I will normally not approach them if I know them, but because I can't recognise them. <laughs> but usually, uh, I've talked to people, uh, my friends and stuff, about uh, friends looking like celebrities, and at, at several instances I've said, you look so much like this and this and this person, and everyone else would respond by saying, no, not at all. <laughs> it's just crazy. Um, but yeah, that is a little bit of a bother that, you know, the facial thing and everything. I just thought that it was me that was stupid or me that was really, really slow. Turns out it's something in my brain. Stupidity is also sort of in, in the brain, but... <laughs> yeah, I, I thought, I don't know, I haven't really investigated synesthesia. Uh, from other points of views than my own. So if you know anything or if you know someone, I would love to check it out. And if you know other videos or you know people talking about the manifestation of their synesthesia, I would love to know because this is mine. This is what 
I feel like and it was it yeah it's super super weird um just a fun fact this has nothing to do with what I do on my channel uh, usually I talk about low waste and zero waste low impact conscious living eco-friendliness and sustainability lots of words for sustainability great um, but I thought this would be fun and also you would get to know me better um, because this is something that I encounter and experience every single day um, so yeah I hope you liked this video if you did leave me a thumbs up or yeah talk to me down below I would also love you to subscribe if you have a slight interest in sustainability and if you don't maybe you could encounter it um, so yeah, also my social media platforms are down below. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Take really good care of yourselves. Until then, bye!